Hello, I'm Kyle Whitaker, County Engagement Specialist in Agriculture and Environment uh, for Webster Wright in Texas County. I'm going to do a short video here of how to process a half a hog. Of course, if you're interested in doing home butchering, that is generally done in the fall or the winter months for the simple fact that we need to let these hog carcasses hang for three to four days and chill out. Uh, I'm at Miller Schools in Lawrence County, Missouri using their food science lab. And I'm just, the first thing I'm gonna do is take this half of pork carcass and break it down into larger chunks of meat uh, called wholesale cuts. So the first thing we're gonna do is separate the ham or the ham leg from the rest of the carcass. And as you can see, there's this comma shaped bone here that's called the H bone, A-I-T-C-H. And so a good way to know how to separate the ham from the loin is you take the H bone about two finger width from the H bone and then you'll need a meat saw for this and you're just going to simply saw through and we're sawing through the vertebrae and once we get through the bone then we can just simply take a, a knife and go ahead and separate the ham from the loin. So as you can see we've got the ham separated from the loin We'll do a little trimming on this. We're gonna uh, pump and cure this ham in a little bit, but this is called the collar fat. I'm gonna take some of the collar fat off, and this can be used for uh, grinding into sausage or uh, sausage patties. There's a little bit of a flexible caudal vertebrae here. It's really more cartilage and bone on the end of the ham that we're gonna take off. And this area over here is called the fore cushion. There's quite a bit of fat there that we really don't need, so we're gonna trim up the fore cushion. And then we would clean this up a little bit, cut the shank off, and I'll make another video uh, on how to pump and cure a fully cooked ham. Next, uh, we've already took the ham leg off, so basically down through here is the, is the loin. Uh, from here forward is referred to as the shoulder, and we'll get our blade Boston roast from the top of the shoulder and get an arm picnic that many people also smoke and cure. Uh, then we have our spare ribs. And sticking out here is called the jowl, and most of the time the jowl is smoked and cured, so I'm gonna cut that off, and we'll smoke and cure that uh, just like we do the fresh side and the hams. So the next thing I wanna do is to remove the shoulder, and you can see uh, the ribs. It, it just kinda depends on the hog, but generally in between the you know, you're going to leave two to three ribs in the shoulder about where the elbow uh, reaches. And again, we're just going to take our, our meat saw, cut through the vertebrae and the sternum bone. Once we get through that bone, then we can just simply take a knife and separate the shoulder from the loin and fresh side. And we can make an arm picnic out of the bottom half and a blade Boston roast out of the top. Uh, we're just going to grind this into sausage today. Okay, so I've, I've took the loin and separated the uh, spare ribs and the fresh side from the loin uh, on the bandsaw. So just to review, uh, we basically have the four, uh, four or five lean cuts, uh, primal cuts of a hog carcass. We have the ham leg. Uh, this is the loin. This is the spare ribs and fresh side that we can cure and make into bacon. Uh, this is the shoulder, and I went ahead and removed the uh, rib bones from it. And then here's the jowl that we removed up here, and we'll go ahead and smoke that. So the next thing I want to do is start uh, working on this fresh side just a little bit. And so you'll notice there's quite a bit of internal fat here. It's oftentimes referred to as leaf fat, but it's actually kidney, pelvic, and heart fat that collects around the animal's organs uh, to protect them. And so uh, to remove the spare ribs and to get our fresh side ready to smoke, the first thing we need to do is just remove some of this. And there's some uh, tough tissue there. And really, it's best just to pull that out with uh, your hand. And some of them come out a lot easier than others. Trying to, to pull the spare ribs out. This will be our fresh side. So you can see I'm laying right here on the fresh side. So I'm simply just going to run my knife right down the rib cage until I get to the end of the spare ribs. 
and you'll notice the ribs will start getting a little more flexible, a little more cartilage to them uh, the further you move back. And then we're just going to start working on pulling these spare ribs out. And I'll show you what this looks like once I get the spare ribs out. Okay, so I've worked on pulling the spare ribs out. You just run your knife uh, down along the rib cage to the end. And then we'll go ahead and cut this out. We're, as you'll notice, we'll end up with a little sternum bone right here. We'll take that over the bandsaw and cut it off. But those are spare ribs. You oftentimes hear people talk about back ribs. And the back ribs are actually up on the loin. And the spare ribs are down on the side belly. So we'll set that to the side. And this is what we'll be able to take and uh, smoke and cure uh, to make slab bacon or sliced bacon. And so I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. You notice it kind of tapers as we move back. So we're going to cut five or six inches of that off to kind of square up our side a little bit. And then we'll use this as a grind uh, in our sausage. And then we'll flip it over and it'll look more like a, what you're used to seeing maybe as a fresh side. Do a little more fat trim here. Flip that over. And we'll just kind of clean up the edges a little bit. And you can see that's starting to look uh, like bacon. And again, uh, we'll fully cook this bacon after we pump and uh, cure it. Uh, but we'll just set that to the side. The next thing we're going to do is to process the loin. And so I'm going to cut this loin in half on the bandsaw, and then I'll come back and talk about that, and we'll cut it into retail cuts. Okay, so what I've done is take and cut the loin uh, in half. And so I have the sirloin half of the loin. And so we, if we take a retail cut off this side, uh, we're getting a rib chop pretty close to our loin chops. Right here is the internal tenderloin. So if you go to a grocery store and, and, and buy a pork tenderloin, usually they put a couple of those in a package. If we look at the other side, this is where our ham leg came off of, and this would be a sirloin chop. We're going to go ahead and cut some chops here. going to cut these about three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to take my bandsaw and start cutting. And we're getting some rib chops. And we're getting ready to move into some loin chops. And so the difference between a loin chop and a rib chop is the loin chop has this tenderloin on it and the rib chop does not. We'll go ahead and cut some more loin chops. You'll notice that tenderloin getting larger as we go. So we have our rib chops here and our loin chops here. clean the edge of that loin up a little. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and show you what a sirloin chop looks like. So there's a sirloin chop. I'll cut another one for you. So what we've done is we've taken a, a half of a of a hog carcass and split it up into its primal cuts and then we've cut a few retail cuts. So just to review what we've done, uh, right up here it's the under part of the, of the hog's neck uh, is called the jowl and it, it'll be smoked and cured and you fix it uh, a lot like bacon. Then we have the shoulder and again we'll, uh, you can make, we're just going to grind this into sausage but you can make blade steaks, uh, pork arm roast out of this part of it. Uh, we're just going to be deboning this one for sausage, but predominantly uh, the Blade Boston Roast that you can purchase in the grocery store is the top half of the shoulder and the arm picnic, which is often smoked and cured just like a ham. Then we have the loin, and uh, so we have the loin where it attaches to the shoulder here, and part of the shoulder blade is bone is left in this loin, and so I've cut a blade chop, and so oftentimes in a store you'll see they'll have uh, some just pork chops uh, and that could be almost any kind of chop but this is a, a blade chop compared to some of the other retail cuts it's got quite a bit more internal fat in it 
and uh, sometimes you'll even have a piece of the blade bone in over here. And so we took the blade chop off, uh, off the front end of the loin, and you can see here's our back ribs. We could just cut those out if we wanted back ribs. And then here's a rib chop. We have this curved rib bone. This is the uh, top loin muscle, and uh, that's a rib chop. And so here's what a rib chop looks like if we cut it off the back side. This is what a loin chop looks like. Notice there's a rib bone in the rib chop, and there's a, a vertebrae in the loin chop, and we have this area over here, which is that inner tenderloin. So we'd call this a T-bone steak and beef. Then we have the rest of the loin. Our loin chop, as you can see, come off right here. And then we have a sirloin chop. This is a sirloin end. And so that's what a sirloin chop looks like. And then here's the ham leg that we're going to pump and cure uh, and smoke. And then back to our fresh side and belly, we remove the spare ribs. We're just running our knife uh, down along the rib bones. And then we're left with our fresh side and we've trimmed this up and we'll smoke and cure that. So hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this short video on how to process a half a hog into primal cuts.